that's what you get for <laughs> hello hello hi hi it's uh linda margaret and we're talking to you today for the existential cuppa but before we actually dive into intuition and feeling the vibe um, i just would like to take a moment for everybody watching and for margaret and i together to just sink into our heart space connect with the earth and i would like to acknowledge that we're broadcasting from larrakia country and i pay my respects and honor to the elders past present and emerging and give my heartfelt gratitude to the traditional custodians the larrakia people for their generous sharing of this beautiful land that i live on and i seek to do spirit work here in accordance and in harmony with the existing deep spiritual connection of this place for the healing and enlightenment of all so welcome here we are we are going to talk about intuition and if you've just joined let us know in the comments who you are and where you're from we'd love to know and if you're keen to talk about intuition you're in the right place and in fact I jumped on a bit early because Margaret and I started talking about intuition and the science behind it um, and then we realized oh we should probably be doing this live <laughs> so Margaret you were telling me about the psychology yeah I was looking um I was looking um, today in relation to science and intuition and trying to see if there were studies that were done, and there have been some done, um, and a lot of it's been done more in the psychology space um, rather than in um, any other science space. So that that was interesting, and also that no one can actually agree that <laughs> that's that's what uh, is happening you know like everyone thinks it's a little bit different or i think they're trying to quantify something that is uh, we don't have the capacity yet to do with science effectively enough that's all um uh, it doesn't take it doesn't detract from it it just means that we're not you know we perhaps aren't there yet or i haven't found studies yet about it mm. so yeah, I think when you start looking at intuition and bringing intuition and science together, we really start stepping into that quantum realm mm, where the idea of entanglement and, you know, electrons from one area can be resonating with an electron from another area at exactly the same vibration and all that sort of thing. It kind of lends weight to what a lot of spiritual people work with, of that idea of um, non-locality, you know, no time, no space. But that's not quite what we're, we're talking about, is it? We're talking about <laughs> intuition. So what the hell is intuition? That's a great question. I'd love to know who's watching, um, what your thoughts are. What is intuition? Because, you know, we're going to tell you what we think, but that's only what we think. True. <laughs> that is only what we think. That's very true. Yeah. 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 So, so who's first? Off you go. Okay. Well, I suppose intuition for me has always been about just knowing, just being clear, just having that sense or that feeling that you know something to be true, even though you may not be able to logically explain why it's true, you just still know that it is true. Uh, it also, I think intuition lends us the capacity to anticipate uh, situations and to read bigger pictures, which is kind of cool too. Yeah. So that for me is what intuition is. Yeah. I find it really interesting that, you know, intuition is kind of held in high level of scepticism by quite a few people. But, you know, it's used in mainstream lingo all the time. We talk about mother's intuition. We talk about gut instinct. We talk about, you know, the goose walking over your grave when you get those mm. chill bumps up and down. And these are all, you know, indicators that there, there is something going on here that's worth exploring. So um, let's have a look at, you know, the gut instinct thing. How many of you have, you know, you've come to a crossroad or you've got a major decision to make and your gut is telling you one thing and your mind, your analytical mind that's done all the pros and cons is saying, no, this way. And you've chosen to go with the analytical mind only to discover a few years down the track, oh, <laughs> gut instinct mm. was right, I should have listened. Yeah. You know, that that's a really powerful indicator that intuition is active. 
Do you have any um, experiences like that, Mike? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think um, I think intuition is uh, my intuition is quite strong, um, and uh, I've always known things um, before they happen. So um, a dream, and then. Um, something happens in a timely manner which re um, reflects the dream that I had. Uh, I think that um, uh, things pop up and I instinctively know what is the right decision to make. I've always trusted my intuition, uh, even when I didn't really understand what it is. I just kind of knew that the feeling was there and that was the reason it was there was because I had to make that decision. Um, examples, I think, are when we um when we work or when i work um with my patients um uh, when we when i'm thinking about a clinical situation or a clinical problem and i've got a number of different uh choices to make for that person and engaging with that person energetically as well as clinically i'm able to discern which is the best one for them um based on how they're feeling and um how and, and what the, um, what my intuition is telling me and what I understand about the products that I want to use with them. So that's a fairly straightforward one for me that happens every single day. Uh, I think intuition can be really subtle. It, it's timeless, so it's not a thing that I... Um, it's not something that I think about in terms of linear time. It's something that it's more... It more evolves or happens um, in its own time. And so it's about trusting that you you know that that's the right thing to do um, based on how you're feeling and you just then allow for it to evolve and for the outcome to happen. I've always found that if I go using my, um, uh, my intellectual brain um, and make a decision based on, you know, what my intellect is telling me, that I'll always make a mistake. Um, <laughs> it'll always turn out not to be what it's supposed to be. <laughs> so I've learned over time to make it... Um, always how it feels. If it feels like it's the right thing to do, then it is the right thing to do, as long as you're honest with yourself. And I think it comes back to making sure that you stay in the present moment in making that decision. Mm. So. What I find interesting is there's, you know, people think, oh, I don't have intuition. I'm not special. There's, you know, I don't have this unique ability. So, you know, one of the things that I have discovered about intuition is that it's a latent human ability. It applies to everybody. Mm, it I lies agree. dormant in everybody. And some people, for whatever reason, have it switched on and are unconsciously connecting with it. And then perhaps they choose to learn to... I keep moving off the screen. Hang on. I'm just going to get close to my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking about... Um, oh, yes tapping into the existing ability that lies within all of us. It's one of those um, key human elements, but we're not aware of it. And, you know, some of us unconsciously connect with it and start having um, experiences of just knowing or just hearing or just feeling um, over and above what the ordinary senses are telling us. So um, I guess it's really important to understand that it's not a skill that only applies to special people. It's an ability that lies dormant, but it becomes a skill when you become conscious of it and start actively working consciously with it. Yeah, I think so. I agree with you there. And I think the most obvious time that that happens is for women who give birth to their children and they make that connection. And we see, you know, the old mother's instinct where you can hear your child call out mum in a room full of kids and you know that that's your kid. I think children um, stimulate that intuition. I've often thought also intuition is a survival mechanism in that if we can anticipate or we're aware or we can see the bigger picture in a slightly different way, we have a much greater opportunity to actually uh, prevent or avoid particular problems in our world and intuition plays a big part in that. Um, I think it's a really useful tool that yeah like Linda says we all have we just need to um let it flow we don't even need to really understand it I don't think we just need to feel how it feels and just let it go mm. and see what happens observe it yeah I think the interesting thing is you know um the power of science to really 
dive in and dig deep and discover all this amazing stuff about the world around us has enabled us to have a really clear understanding about the physical body and all the different senses of the body, how they work, how everything's connected through neurons and, you, you know, all this intricate stuff going on inside your body. But um, I guess their method of exploration and their technology is limited to the physical stuff and hasn't quite um, come to grips with the subtlety that it exists in each person. You know, for example, I think that our bodies are literally made for connection at every level mm -hmm. that you look at in the body, whether you're looking at, you know, the, the elemental structure, you know, the um, chemical composition, the water part of your body, the electrical system within the body, uh, and then the energetic field that, you know, interconnects and intersperses and interweaves everything, um, you know, we're made for connection. So the fact that we have senses over and above the physical senses to enable that connection even more clearly uh, is not a surprise. Well, it's not a surprise for me. <laughs> no, I think, and I think we're seeing that with COVID, you know, um, and the mental health issues that are becoming more obvious with lockdowns and things like that where we're not able to connect with the people that we love and care for but also our friends and um, you know meeting new people and participating in community and all those kind of things that connection stuff is not happening and we're suffering because of it um, so I think that's that that's really obvious at, mm. at this very basic level and then as we you know move up through all the other levels as well I think it's really important um, human beings were a community. We're, we're community beings, you know. Absolutely. We need a herd. We need a tribe. Yes. Um, to survive, you know. What's the old adage, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid. Yeah, you know. <laughs> we need more than, you know, more than one person in our life. Yes. So yeah. that's a whole new discussion, isn't it? It is indeed. Mothering <laughs> in isolation. Yeah. But yeah. We, can, we can talk about that another day. Indeed. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think connection at any level is really important. But understanding that um, through our more subtle body we can we can connect as well. I mean, that's why, you know, you go into a group or you meet, you go into a new situation and you meet people and you think, oh, I resonate with that person or I, I, I'd like to get to know that person a bit more. And that's that vibrational energy connection happening there. Mm -hmm. Um that kind of thing. I mean, the best example I have is the moment I met my husband nearly 30 years ago, um, I knew instantly I was going to marry him. Yeah, or 35 years ago. I knew oh, wow. Instantly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it was, there was no question in my mind and I didn't even know him at the time, didn't even know his name. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so, you know, love at first sight is a thing. It is a thing, yeah, yeah. definitely. Cool. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you certainly found out. Yes. So, you know, we were talking about what intuition is, um, but if you're not feeling connected to your intuition, Margaret, have you got any suggestions about where to start with making that connection? Uh, whenever I need to connect with my intuition or I feel a bit disconnected from my world, um, and sometimes when we get really stressed or we're really heavily involved in issues going on either at home or work or whatever we disconnect our mind kind of takes a holiday over in the corner and our body's trying to work out what to do I sit um, I plant my feet on the ground I breathe so I close my eyes I breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth I do that two to three times and I allow my mind and my body to reconnect that brings us back into the present moment and that allows us then to feel how our body feels. And I think intuition is about that feeling in our body when we're connected and we're in that, uh, we're in the, the now and the present moment. The more that we sit in this moment, the easier it is to feel how our body feels and how to generate um, that, that vibration or that feeling. The more you practice that, the easier it then becomes to apply that intuition or that feeling into making decisions, whether you're at work, you know, whether you're with your family, you know, whether you're driving around trying to work out which road to go 
to look for something it doesn't really matter it's just a, a matter of connecting in with that feeling and then going from there the breath i found to be the simplest way to do it mm. um, and everybody breathes so you don't need anything to do it you just need to be you know just need to be conscious of what you're actually doing which is trying to bring your mind back into your body and do it that way that's the simplest way to start i think yeah absolutely you know that just made me think that um, intuition is such a body-based um, sense, you know. It works inside the body. It interprets what's coming from outside the body, but it actually is based, it exists inside the body. So, yeah, or, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to connect with intuition is really about slowing down, quietening the mind, and learning to trust, learning to trust yourself, mm -hmm. learning to trust your body, learning to trust the things that come in that you think, oh, that's just my imagination. What? No, no. That, I'm imagining that. Um, because basically some of the stuff that comes through, and, you know, this is based on being years um, as a, a hands-on practitioner, some of the, the information that comes through when you're working on somebody else's um, body and energy and so on it is um, you, you do wonder you go am I just making this up but what's actually happening is when your imagination kicks in in these particular settings it's kind of like your nervous system's way of interpreting yeah I the agree. information that's come in in a way that your brain can manage yeah and then as those particular pathways become clearer and you learn the language of what's coming through then it starts to make a lot more sense but in those early times mm. it's just like oh no this no i oh, know that's it's a load true. of rubbish <laughs> yeah look i remember as a little kid having uh feelings about particular people or um and not really understanding why um i think sometimes it's not always conscious but it's about trusting it like linda said if you trust yourself and you trust what you're feeling then you actually your intuition will actually grow and become more um it'll become easier to use um, in your everyday world um, because you trust it. Um, and really that's all it comes down to. We don't need to make it any more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we feel it. Um, we go, oh, that feels odd. Maybe that's my intuition. We trust. Okay, I trust that that's my intuition. And then just watch and observe and wait for it to, you know, show you different things in your life. You know, they talk about synchronicities and coincidences and all those things, but I actually think all of those are just moments of intuition, moments of, you know, deja vu. They talk about being a split second um, separation. But I actually think it's just another form of intuition. It's another way of observing our world in a slightly different way. You know, when we look at anybody, um, everyone looks at the world, everyone sees our world in a different mm. way based on their yeah. cultural understanding, their experiences, their age, you know, where they're at in their lives, all of those things, you know. So this is just another way of observing our world and participating in our world more fully and more honestly with ourselves. Mm. And I think the more that we use the intuition, the better off we are in um, living our life authentically and getting what we want. Yeah, so I just wanted to come back to that point about connection, about the fact that our bodies are literally made for connection. And um, although I haven't done this reading for a very long time, you know, quantum physics supports some of the ideas that um, people in the spiritual realm actually work with. And, you know, this idea of quantum entanglement and the fact that, you know, there's uh, research that shows, you know, if you take this, this electron over here and you split an atom I can't even remember like I said it's been years since I've done the reading I probably should have done the reading again <laughs> indeed <laughs> but you know there have been experiments done that show that's your intuition thank you that's a great <laughs> idea and my intuition is saying oh cut to the chase <laughs> anyway look I'm not going to try and explain the experiment because I just can't I can't think of it at the moment those neural pathways just you know they're not they're not connecting um, but there is some 
exploration and science into the fact that everything in the universe is energy and that through that particular element or aspect, it's all interconnected. So it's not really that hard to extrapolate from there that that's the same for us yeah. in the microcosm. Absolutely. It's just difficult because we are so um, entrenched in the idea of 3D reality the way it is. So it's a really hard concept to grasp because, like I said, those neural pathways, <laughs> it's it's a bit of a brain fart. Mm. But can I say that? <laughs> you just did. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, it, I think it, or I feel like it comes back to, you know, th this concept, if you've never thought about it before or never considered it before, is worth, you know, a little bit of a, a, a thing um, or a feel and see how your body responds to it. If this is vibrating, you know, if you feel like this resonates with you, then just sit with it and see how it goes. Um, I think sometimes we're searching for reasons why things are when really it just is. And we want to be free enough and open-minded enough just to allow for things to evolve and to feel how they feel and trust the journey, you know. Um, it's more about um, working our way through something or using our intuition to help us get through something to get to where we want to go um, and then discovering that actually, you know, we, we actually got to where we wanted to go much quicker and now we're looking for the next thing. It's, you know, I would say often to my patients, it's, it's another avenue or another another tool in your tool, toolbox that you we all have um, available to us all of the time. Um, and the more we embrace it and the more we um, are grateful for it, the better it is. It's like anything, you know. It's like a child, you know. If you ignore them, they get more and more demanding, you know. You acknowledge them and honour them and they disappear and go and play somewhere else. It really just comes down to, you know, honouring what we already have. Mm. Mm. And I think, you know, sometimes that building the trust link mm. is quite difficult. Yeah. So, you know, when when you are trying to really tune in and listen, sometimes you tools, tools like this yes. are really useful. So things like pendulums, oracle cards, tarot readings, um, can you see crystals even? Yeah, crystals, you know, colours. Colours, all that sort of stuff is actually a really potent way for you to connect because, you know, when you um, put a yes or no question to a pendulum, it's not the pendulum that's telling you the answer. All the pendulum is doing is tuning in tuning into mm. you, tuning into your energy, your deeper truth, and just letting that come to the surface at a time when you can't quite get there yourself. So learning to use a pendulum, I'm just getting a bit mesmerised by my pendulum, <laughs> can be a really useful starting point. You know, you can start checking in. Okay, I'm going to ask my intuition. I really don't know. And, you know, there's the stress of sometimes it's that performance anxiety mm. kicks in when we start using intuition. It's like, oh, I can't do this. Everybody else can do this and I can't. There's something special about them and I'm just ordinary and blah, blah, blah. So something like this can really help you. You can you can test yourself. You can try and discern the answer for yourself. I check in with a pendulum all the time. And then you can check mm. in with the pendulum. And this is really good, like, you know, if you're in a bit of a rush. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, you're feeling a bit overwhelmed and confused and you've got, you know, a million things to do and you just need to know the answer, ask yeah. your pendulum. You know, the interesting thing is um, my husband asked me to check food with the pendulum. <laughs> you know, he'll get something out of the fridge and goes, oh, is this all right? Can you can you do your thing? <laughs> That's actually really cool. Love him. <laughs> <laughs> but you can use a pen. You, can, you don't need a pendulum like Linda's. They're wonderful and they're beautiful, but you can actually use anything that moves, anything yep. that dangles. Necklace. Yep. Um, keys. Earrings. Yeah, anything will, can be what, used as a pendulum. Yep. You just learn, need to learn how to do it. And if you'd like to learn how to do that, we might actually put together a little fact sheet. Yes, we can do yeah, that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. And we'll, I don't know, we'll, we'll find somewhere to stick it. And let you know. <laughs> Maybe you could comment. And tell us that you'd like the how to work with a pendulum mm. fact sheet 
and we'll get it to you. How does that sound? That sounds good. Yeah. What a brainwave. See, intuition indeed is telling me. <laughs> and Don't just tell them it. about it. Yeah. Tell them how to work with it. Yeah. And you're trusting it. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. Cool. That's very good. So now have we covered off everything that we wanted to talk about today on intuition? I think so. Do yeah. you feel like there's anything more? It doesn't feel like we need, I need to talk about anything more. No. Um, I'm going with my gut. Yeah. And it says... It's tea time. It is indeed. We're going <laughs> We're to have, have a cup, cup of tea. Of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to everybody who did join in um, and watched us. Thank you to those on the replay who are watching. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So please um, do comment and we'll come back through and check the comments. If you are after the fact sheet about working with a pendulum, drop it in the comments and we'll come back and work out how to get it to you. We'll actually even write it first and then we'll get it to you. Over our cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. It's been Linda and Margaret. And it's been an absolute delight to have an ex existential cuppa. I can't even say it. Why did I pick such a tongue twister with you this afternoon? And I hope you can join us same time next week. Next week. Indeed. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye.